Hello and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video. I'm your host, Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. We're going to go over some items that sold in our eBay charity shop. There's going to be lots of bolos in this video, and we have a special deep dive via worth point at the end so you definitely want to stay tuned till the very end so i appreciate you being here let's get started uh, first up we have this bausch and Lomb zoom 60 scope and uh, this sold for 46 dollars and it is um, some sort of spotting scope i'm not exactly sure what kind of mount this had to go on uh, there's the bausch and Lomb logo that's like kind of one of the vintage older ones and uh, for those that don't know, Bausch & Lohm is definitely a bolo brand to keep out a uh, lookout for. Uh, they've been around since 1853. This company's been around for a while. And we're going to take a little bit of a deep dive real quick early in this video. We're going to have another deep dive at the end of the video, so you definitely want to stay tuned to that. Let's get into this deep dive via Worth Point. As we can see here, some of the older uh, Bausch & Lohm lenses are worth crazy, crazy, crazy money. As you can see here, 4,000, 5,000, 3,000. Uh, they've been doing lenses and microscopes and glasses and all kinds of things for many years. Like I said, the company started in 1853. And if we take a little bit of look into Wikipedia, I found this is interesting. Uh, two, two gentlemen actually founded Bausch & Lohm. Um, as we can see here, John Bausch and Henry Lohm. John Bausch was an optometrician and Henry Lohm was a cabinet maker. They both, you know, came together and it makes sense because there's a lot of wood kind of uh, boxes and things that, that house like the microscopes and, and, and it was it was a match made in heaven. Uh, this was one of the the oldest companies, American made companies till they were sold. Um, I think it says in 2007 uh, and they moved to New York. But anyways, I just thought I would do a little bit of a side note on that. Uh, it's a company that that it's just a fascinating kind of thing as we can see here there's lots of vintage lenses that go for crazy money um so just if you see Bausch and Lohm get a little excited uh and do some more research because there are what there are some things that they've created that isn't worth like a, a ton a ton of money but there are some home runs out there to be looked out for so definitely look out for that uh, next up we have the sterling silver squash blossom turquoise this is a pendant and uh, for those who don't know, squash blossoms are basically like necklaces and pendants that are, um, you know, unique to Southwestern Native American style jewelry. This one just happens to be uh, just the pendant. And I, what I found kind of interesting about this one is it didn't actually have any markings, which usually uh, these things some have, you know, usually have some sort of marking, an artist marking. Unfortunately, it didn't. Uh, if you're going to be selling any Native American jewelry, uh, remember on eBay, you're going to have to have the tribal affiliation, which is like Navajo, Zuni, um, Inuit, like base, the basically tribe and the artist's name. So you're going to have to have both those things to sell any Native American jewelry. Now, you could sell it as uh, other jewelry, but you cannot use certain keywords like Native American. Uh, I think there's some other keywords that you can't use if you're going to sell it. Uh, you have to put it in a different category and you have to name it differently or else eBay is going to flag it. Uh, this happens from time to time. Uh, also, sometimes you might get a sterling silver uh, like belt buckle that has like a tiger, not tiger, like a bear claw. Uh, you can't really sell claws on eBay. Um, it could be a, a, a faux claw or something like that that you can you can list, but it can't be a real one. Uh, just like ivory is, you, you can only sell that uh, if it's made out of bone or something like that. So that's just one of the things. Anyways, it sold for $100. I wish I could have seen the other piece that went with this, if there ever was uh, the necklace portion of this. We've sold uh, a couple of squash blossom necklaces. You know what? We're going to go, for, you know, forget it. We're going to actually go. I'm going to show for those that don't know. We're going to just do it. Here, check this out. This is what a splash blossom necklace looks like. See how it looks? It's very unique. Um, I mean, you know, you can definitely tell these apart from anything else. They have all this kind of, they all, they remind me of like a, like a scorpion or something like that, the way they look on you. But there's some of them that are worth crazy money. Uh, you're going to see the majority of them in the neighborhood of two to $500 in that wheelhouse. But there are some that are like go into the thousands, especially if you can get some Navajo or uh, Zuni or some of the vintage, vintage ones that are, are made by a, a certain artisan 
Uh, let me actually go to sold listings and we'll go to highest and we'll just take a little bit of a peek to see what they have here. I'm curious. Yeah, see, 5,000, 6,000, 4,000, 3,000. You know, a lot of these are all dependent on the maker uh, for the most part. That's what adds, you know, the value. Of course, there's, you know, there's money in the turquoise. Uh, there's some turquoise that is worth, you know, more than others, especially. Uh, they call it Sleeping Beauty, but there's also like Cinderella, Turquoise, um, the Matrix. That's the, basically the little black pieces that that flow through the um, the Turquoise. There's some. There's I forget what it's called, like Bisbee. I think it's called Bisbee Turquoise. There's different Turquoise that's actually even worth money, as we can see here. Uh, but anyways, definitely look at look out for those things. I've seen a couple of those in my day. Uh, that we've sold in the shop and uh, we haven't sold i think we sold the highest price one we sold of like 1200 maybe uh but we did have another one the other day that sold for like you know five or six hundred dollars uh next up we have this lot of tin toys as we can see here these look vintage but they're actually reproductions uh, i wanted to list this we didn't make a ton of money on this this was like 30 bucks but uh, i just wanted to let everyone know like sometimes when you see this kind of stuff you get a little excited you're like oh my god this is like mint condition vintage stuff it's got to be worth hundreds it's just they're actually reproductions and uh, this one in the middle is obviously a newer one if you see any barcodes on any boxes uh, of course that's going to let you know that it's not an a vintage type toy uh, though vintage tin robots are actually worth a pretty crazy amount of money some of them are uh, especially when it comes to uh, those type of toys, it's all about condition, uh, especially the vintage stuff. It's all about condition. Does it have a box? If it's got a box, what's the box condition? All that kind of stuff. So uh, definitely just be warned that even like the, the coin banks, the cast iron coin banks, there's a ton of reproductions of those. But finding like a, a true vintage or antique one uh, means, you know, 10x, 100x the value. Uh, next up, we have this LGB train. This is a G-Scale set. Uh, we talked about LGB trains in the last video, and this time I actually got a special little treat for everyone on this particular video. Uh, but anyways, this set sold for $200. Look out for these kind of sets. Uh, sometimes they're out there. They're huge trains. Uh, usually the engine, which is this thing right here, is very heavy because it's got, like we said in the other video, that it's got to pull uh, the different kind of other trains and, and you know, uh, box cars and things like that cabooses and those are usually plastic but this part is uh, usually uh, worth money uh, a little bit of a pro tip too sometimes these transformers and you can just look them up by the model number this is uh, 5003 slash 110 sometimes these transformers alone go for like 50 to 80 to 100 dollars so uh, if you're into parting out stuff you know that can happen if you buy this set and it happens to be missing um, the transformer that's a, that's going to be like almost half your profits are going to be gone because the people that buy these kind of sets, you know, sometimes they look out for the whole uh, picture. And if you're missing like the engine or you're missing the transformer, that can mean a lot of money down the drain. So uh, the special thing I have is we talked about train scales. As, as we can see here, this is a G scale, which is like, I think the largest scale they have. Uh, let's look at this real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different scales. Uh, G scales at the top, and what that represents is the different size ratio to the actual train size. So an actual train is one to one. The very smallest T scale is one uh, four fiftieth. So basically, fi uh, 450 times smaller than a real train. Uh, the one that everyone's pretty much used to or the one that is made in the most scale is ho scale it is 187 now i'm going to correct myself last video i said 157 i apologize it's 187 and that is slightly smaller than a hot wheel a hot wheel is 164 scale as you can see here so uh there's actually scales larger than g um you know those are the ones that you can actually pretty much sit on and ride uh, and i can't remember the actual scale if they even has a scale for that particular size but this is a good uh, uh, note to know uh, my favorite scale when I was growing up was Z which is 120 uh, 220th and it's so small uh, it's the second smallest one on this scale they just you can just put a whole set in such a small area uh, you know the bigger the the train of course the more space you're going to need to actually run it and uh, usually even the more power it's going to need to generate uh, whatever you're doing, especially scenery and, and, and different like lights and things like that. So uh, just a little bit of a deep dive into, into scales on trains. 
Uh, next up, we have this custom Evolos Funko Pop. This is a Pokemon. Uh, as you can see here, this was kind of like a yellow Pokemon. And what I did is painted it. And uh, we did sell this for charity. Uh, there was a couple of them. This one sold for $50. Just kind of like a, a planting seeds. You know, if you, if you have some artistic ability, you can definitely get into like painting different toys and selling them. As you can see here, I have my own little sticker. Evolos uh, limited edition. Uh, something fun to do and this sold for fifty dollars these kind of poke these kind of like uh, Funko Pops retail for about ten dollars so um, you know just like maybe like you know 45 minutes to an hour worth of your time especially if you have any artistic ability is uh, definitely a little bit of a, a fun side hustle and, and a fun hobby that I used to do uh, next up uh, speaking of uh, Indian uh, American Indian Native American jewelry we have a handmade silver turquoise ring uh now unfortunately this was signed but i could not find anywhere that i can figure out what this we uh and it could even have been a vve it could have been a lot of things i, I looked this up i couldn't find any uh information unfortunately on the artisan that actually made this which is unfortunate because sometimes that information alone could mean 2x 10x the item that you could have got for this so like if this was a very well-known artist that did this ring instead of almost fifty dollars it could have been two hundred dollars it could have been a hundred and fifty dollars uh, so this one of those things you can there's lots of websites online to look that stuff up so if you just look up uh, if you google Native American hallmarks there's like two or three sites that are really good that go by alphabetic order and you can look at these different uh, um, artisans up uh, next up, we have this For Your Consideration DVD lot. And uh, for those that don't know, when uh, shows are up for, or movies actually are up for uh, Emmy nominations or, Ameri or Academy Award nominations, um, different people will get these DVDs for free to kind of review the different shows. Uh, people that are on the Emmy committee or the, uh, you know, the, the Academy of Film board. And we, we work out of Burbank, California, which is like the media center of America. We've talked about this before. So we get this stuff in all the time. And uh, um, I'm not completely sure if it's legal to sell this kind of stuff, but e eBay's got tons of it. And we've never been stopped selling this stuff. I, I'm not sure if it's like not, it doesn't ever say not for resale, I think, on the back of these. But it's just one of those things that kind of be, you know, um, just aware of because I don't think this stuff is supposed to be sold but anyways there's like hundreds of listings of this so it's like one of those things uh, but anyways there's some of them that are worth crazy money and it's usually the Netflix ones and I'm gonna go into a little bit of a deep dive right now via worth point about those now uh, the reason why the Netflix DVD for your consideration copies are worth so much is basically there is no other copies of those physically Netflix is a streaming on-demand website where you go, you pay some money, you can stream some things, and there's never physical DVDs or Blu-rays created. I mean, they've done them for very specific things, but for the most part, you're never going to find a, a hard copy. Uh, so you can see here that some of the hard copy for your consideration DVDs from Netflix have gone for crazy amount of money. Um, like this Sabrina one, 150 bucks. This Lost in Space, two, $200, $150. And there's a, a pretty good amount of those type of things that are worth money. So it's just kind of another thing to look out for when you're out there and about. Uh, once again, I'm Chris at Thrift Shop Hustler. If you enjoyed this video, go down there and leave a comment. Say hi. Uh, just leave any kind of comment below, honestly. That helps the algorithm, and we will see you next time. Take care.